All kinds of sleeves were popular in the 20s. And I'm gonna show you one more, the bell sleeve, which again is coming back into fashion. One of my favorite styles was the silk chiffon, huge billowing sleeves with a nice cuff. It was very elegant. Nowadays, they wear it as a blouse with skinny jeans or with nice pants. We also have on this knit top here, very modern look. Here's a little bit of a bell. I added a cuff and then you can kind of just see it just the purpose of the bell. That's why they call it a bell. You end up with this extra fabric here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make this particular sleeve, which was a European influence with all the embroidery and embellishment. I love this style. I'm actually gonna add this to a black knit top and wear it, it's great. It's embroidered and then I've added some trim. So the pattern alteration is really basic, very simple. If you follow along, you can make the extreme version or just something simple like I have here. Start with a sleeve pattern. If you have a blouse pattern, that's even better because you already have your cuff. So I'm just gonna say, have a blouse pattern so you have your cuff because I'm not gonna show you how to make a cuff. Cuffs are so easy. This is what the pattern looks like for the green top behind me. It was just a simple ruched tee pattern. I slid up both lines here that were parallel to the grain line right to here and then it just kind of makes where it can move around. One thing I want you to notice on here, which we're gonna do, is I have this longer curve right through here. I've only extended an inch and a half to the front, and I've extended three inches to the back. Why on earth would I do that when we're made pretty much even? Well, when you have the bell sleeve, you don't want a bunch hanging in the front. You want this to still be somewhat slender, and then this to billow down, okay? So that's why there's one and a half inches to the front and three to the back. And this curve here, is what will fit into your cuff. And most of our arms are not perfectly straight. Some of us do, but not many. So if you're curved like this, you're gonna need some extra fabric to make that bell. All right, so I'm gonna move this pattern out of the way and show you how easy this is to do. Here's one pattern. Again, a very simple sleeve. And I'm just gonna take a ruler. If you have a quilter's ruler or something with some lines on it, it really makes it easy. And in order to do the other top that I have, I made a line, this is two inches from the grain line. This grain line is center on the sleeve. So if you don't have a grain line like that, find your center of your sleeve and make one line. So here's one, and I'm gonna make one more. Just an inch, maybe an inch and a half from that. But notice what I'm doing. These lines that I'm drawing are all parallel. If they're not perfectly parallel, it's just because I'm on TV. When you're at home, you can be a little bit more careful. All right, and one more. And that's it. And then you will trim and cut each line all the way up. Not through this area, but just think of these little dots here as a hinge. So there's your pattern, we're getting started. I've already cut one pattern up and I actually used a little bit larger size so you could see really well what's going on here. See how these are just little hinges? So if you wanted to do one of those silk chiffon designs I was talking about that have, they just have a huge billowing sleeve with a tight cuff, your pattern would be stretched out just about like that, quite a bit. I also noticed this is the back of my blouse because this is where I'm gonna add a curve. But we're not gonna go quite that far because my paper's not that wide and I want you to see what is involved here. If this isn't hinging quite enough, just trim up a little bit higher. Now don't worry, if you accidentally snip through your pattern up here, it's okay. Just put a piece of tape there. So I'm gonna line this up and just kind of pin this. I'm eyeballing this right now just to give myself somewhat of a base. All right, so here is the center of my sleeve, and I can see that, I'm just gonna mark it with, it's somewhere right around here. Because I've already cut up that grain line, and I've spread it apart. So I have three pieces going towards the back and two towards the front. Now you're gonna wanna measure how far this goes and how far the back goes. Again, give yourself more room back here. Now this sleeve, if I were just to follow it around, that would be the bottom of my sleeve. 
But then you're gonna have a very tight fit here and your cuff is actually gonna pull up high on your arm. So this is the back. Now if you're using a blouse pattern like I mentioned, you're already gonna have a little section of your blouse that, like right here, this is where your cuff goes on. Usually you have a little slit right here. So let me close this just a little bit so it's not on the paper. Here we go. All right, so this right here and this right here. These two have to meet when you sew together your pattern. So if you're gonna have a billowing bell, first of all, you need to add some length. I'm gonna add, let's just say this is one inch. Usually it's three fourths of an inch to one inch to one and a half, depending on how much you want. And we're gonna add one inch right here. So this point right here has to be the same length as this point. Imagine you're sewing your sleeve together. This point here, usually even in a couture blouse, if I have a basic blouse pattern and all of this is straight, I add lengths right here. I'm gonna add three inches. It could be anywhere from two inches to three. And what this does is when your arm is curved, you have your cuff and then your blouse hangs nicely without pulling your cuff up. So you could use a French curve. I'm just gonna draw this freestyle. You go a little bit longer through here and back up. And that's how simple that is. Now, again, this was my inch line, so let me draw this over so you're not totally confused. Here we go. Here's my one inch. Make this a little bit longer. There we go. So ignore this line here. This is going to be the base of my pattern. Now, that's drawn freehand, but this part will follow this curve. This part will go down and up to here. And you can experiment with this a little bit. Now, your, that cuff that I was telling you about, that goes all the way to here. So this will be your slit for your blouse. And that's what I've done here. So let's talk a little bit about the design on here. I have some pieces already cut out. With today's machines, the possibilities of this are endless. There are so many decorative stitches. Even if you don't do quilting and embroidering, have fun with this one. So this is stabilizer, tearaway stabilizer, embroidery stabilizer. It presses, you can see the shiny side. I've pressed it to the back of my sleeve. This is this sleeve right here. You can see my slit. You can see how it goes longer in the back and these two parts will meet. So now hopefully you understand that part now. This is chalk marks. And the only thing I've done with these chalk marks is I've used the ruler to make sure that these are perpendicular to the grain line. So when I sew this sleeve together, these will all match up and the bottom will match up, okay? And I also have three drawn here, so I know that I'm gonna put my trim in the middle, just like this, and embroidery lines. I do both sleeves at the same time when you chalk them in, then you know they're gonna be even. Here's my cuff. Now on the cuff, I have fabric stabilizer that you would use in a garment, and this is perfect for this design. I already chalked in a bunch of lines because notice I've got embroidery, I've got trim, all these things going on. So this is going to be my cuff, and that's going to be my design. Couple more things. This ribbon right here has all of these little chunky things. If that goes through your sewing machine, you are gonna break a needle, and that will not be pretty. So when I lay out this design, I will pick off these pieces at the end that are gonna be in the seam allowance. Not only that, I use two different kinds of thread, and I use a denim jean needle. Why the G needle? Well, I'm using metallic thread. Metallic thread is great to use. It's come so far than what it used to be. And that's what I used all the way through this design here. Let me bring this over to the center. That's what I used here. But by using the denim G needle, I didn't have any breakage. Nothing happened. It was just perfect. And this is just embroidery thread, which is what I used through here. So let's go to the machine, and I'm just going to show you just a couple easy ways to do this. There's usually character stitches, or they might be called embroidery stitches, something like that. Just go through them and pick out a fun design. There's so many to choose from. So here I had just these little balls, which were really fun. I could choose just one of them to do and add other designs to it, or I'm just gonna do a row of them. And all I'm gonna do is go to my machine. If you have one of the machines that has a laser light, this is the easiest way to make a straight stitch. I line up my laser light and just start stitching. Now this is the metallic. I want it to be very similar to what I already did. So I think the metallic was the second row up. And all I'm gonna do is stitch. 
Again, I'm using the denim jean needle. And you can see, this is the machine. Kind of scared me for a second. It just does the whole stitch by itself. The G needle, this is a silk noil, that's what this fabric is. And the G needle will puncture that without making um, any mess of the fabric. You'll notice, if you notice that your embroidery stitches are skipping or your fabric starts to pucker a little bit, change your needle to a new needle. That is usually the most common mistake. I'm just gonna go a little bit further and then I'm gonna show you how to sew the ribbon on. All right, let's see what we have here. See how fun that is? Now on the other top, I did it in black, but I thought you could see it better if I did it in silver. Very easy to do, very fun. Now what about this trim? This trim has so much going on. We have sequins, we have metallic thread, and we have these metal things that I told you to keep away from your machine. After I have all these lines together, I just try to line up this ribbon. I'm just going to pick a simple straight stitch and Put your needle in the one side position. You don't really need to use a special foot or anything, but what you don't wanna do is you really do not want your needle to run in those sequins. They're kind of a little tricky to see. I've left the laser light on so you can see. I have that laser light lined up with these sequins and I know that I don't wanna go there. So I'm actually gonna move my needle to the center. I have a straight stitch and I'm just gonna go down. Notice how my foot goes right over those sequins. I'm going slowly. See how nicely that goes over those sequins? If for some reason you have a trim and all of it's puckering under your foot, you might want to use a zipper foot. That's also a very simple thing. So let me lift this up and let's see what we have here. I used silver on here. I used black on the other, but here we go. We've got the silver. Now, that isn't going to work the whole way, but if I go all the way down with a, a similar thread, you won't see it. Now I just want to go down the other side and show you one more thing here. Okay. I had absolutely no need to stitch down the center. See when I do both sides, it holds it down there nice and firmly because you have that stabilizer? That's perfect. So you can add ribbon, you can add trim, you can embellish, make the bell sleeve, or do something simple like a knit top. But there are so many options just by changing your sleeve. Have fun with this one.